Hey YouTube believers, Chris Matt coming at you with more than meets the eye, the Transformers number 45. And uh, you'd think 45 issues in that this book would start to get a little hokey, and I will admit to a degree, it does, but it's still entertaining and there's still a lot to be said. Especially we got the return of Circuit Breaker, which she was kind of one of those ones that just sort of kept reappearing. And I kind of wish I could see her more as a hero instead of a... I guess at this point, she's not a villain, but an anti-hero. And uh, the other thing that kind of starts to kill me is <laughs> how the main Transformers sort of start disappearing more and more out of the book. But sometimes that can help keep a book fresh. Speaking of which, the print date on this one was October 1988. And it's still relatively interesting, and some of the things that happen and I still feel happen to this day. So let me explain. After we talk about who made this book. This is... Bob Bedansky, writer, who was the one that really kind of kicked off the Transformers comic. Uh, Jose Delbo, doing the breakdowns. Dave Hunt, doing the finished art. Neil Yomtoff, colorist. Bill Oakley, doing the lettering. Don Daly, editor. And Tom, De <laughs> excuse me, Tom DeFalco, at this point, was the editor-in-chief. And when I first opened this book, I saw Monsters from Mars. And I was like, oh, please tell me that this, like, this isn't serious because... <laughs> The paneling's not that dynamic, and we just kind of see this sort of Buck Rogers, Logan Run, sci-fi generic guy running in who, this actor's name is Jake. This is uh, Carissa. That's her real name. Uh, here it's Celeste, I think. But, yeah, you see this alien, and you're thinking, no, nah, I don't buy it for a second. But... Then we just start to see this lovely kind of... And to kind of go... Uh, semi-meta it is a film studio so this is Jake Carissa and then the guy in full fashion 80s his name is Rolly and he just really puts on the 80s cheese of a uh, oh what do you call it um, he, he just thinks he's the bee's knees like the next best thing since sliced bread and Jake's talking about how he can't stand to work under these uh, conditions and he's trying to interfere with uh Rolly tearing into the prop master and he's just tall oh, you can't act under any conditions jake colton before i hired you for this flick you were a has-been understudy on the diner theater circuit now get lost and uh, Rolly, even though he's a jerk you, you can kind of understand because the robot that we just saw melt it's going to take weeks to rebuild so production is at a halt so while they're watching the news, um, again, I think they're trying to wrap up what happened in issue 44, which I want to get because it sounds like some great stuff happened because it sounds like the Transformers uh, are in space. So we see everyone at this point really just <laughs> does not trust what the uh, robots in disguise can do because it's hard to distinguish, in their eyes, Autobots from Decepticons. In their eyes, they're the same. So with that, <coughs> we cut into what's happening and we get an appearance of Skylinks. For me, this is the first time I've actually got to see him in his comic book form. And uh, one thing about Skylinks that always kind of I found off-putting is even though he's a cool character, and I really like what they did with uh, what's the second part of the Cybertronian trilogy that they're doing on Netflix? It's not Earthfall or Earthrise. I can't remember, but Skylinks is in it, and uh, Optimus has like this vision, and it's just psychedelic as all get out. But here he saves some kids from space, and everyone's like, how about a picture? And they're like, who are you? I'm Skylinks, Skylinks, Lieutenant Commander of the Autobots, 3rd Airstrike Division of Cybertron. How about a few pictures with the kids? I really don't have the time, but my right side is my best, okay? <laughs> so he has a little bit of that vanity, so if you can kind of ignore that, he's still a cool character. Now, with that said, we see this person kind of uh, trolling, not trolling, but uh, spying on Skylinks. And it's like, you shouldn't go shoot in your mouth about your whereabouts, robot. Not if you want to stay in good working order. So I like how they don't really reveal the face, even though on the cover they gave it away. They should have really not, or at least said the return of someone, and then let it be mysterious. I think that would have helped quite a lot. But nonetheless, it's mysterious, and it's very noirish to a degree. And then, once they wrap up what happened with the last issue, Skylinks takes off. It introduces Circuit Breaker, or Circuit, yeah, Circuit, 
dang it, hold on. Yeah, Circuit Breaker. I kept thinking it was Live Wire, but that's Superman. But anyway, uh, Rolly's agent says, well, you should go out to the woods while, you know, production's on hold. They say that they've seen Bigfoot. And Rolly's not buying it, but he says, hey, there's military, and da 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 da, da. So he grabs... This right here reminds me of King Kong, because the comic right here kind of starts to turn into, like, a monster movie, like going to Skull Island. So he grabs his production crew, and... <laughs> They're like, this isn't really in the job description. Look, you two, if you got a better offer, then leave. Which they don't. They're kind of a, between a rock and a hard place. Um, the military won't let them pass because this, there's more to this Bigfoot thing than meets the eye. Ha 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 ha, da dun shh. Anyway, he, uh, Rolly, again, being the 80s sleaze producer, uh, what is it called, bribes the locals to show him how to get around the military. And this is where we're introduced to a character called Skullgrin. Now you would think, normal common sense, you'd be running at terror at the side of this. And the artwork is a little hokey. I kind of wish this was a more dynamic panel. But anyway, it, you ignore that. And it's a good read, in my opinion. <laughs> Rolly actually makes Jake take the camera. He's like, get some footage of this for our movie. And Jake's just kind of like, yeah, um, I don't know how I feel about this. But anyway, um, Skullgren actually agrees. Like, they actually get him calmed down. If you want to know how, read the comic, which I do highly suggest. It says, come work for me, babe. I'll make you a star. And so I like this whole montage of Time Magazine, People Magazine, you know, Monster from Mars, and they show how everyone kind of is starting to get elevated uh, in their status, you know, ticker tape parades, which I've not really seen for actors in a long time. And with that, we still see um, a lady in a wheelchair watching this, this thing. She come to find out it is a robot. And uh, people are, you know, and then here, this kind of reminds me of the end of King Kong again, where everyone's taking photos of him at the his display. And he gets mad, but Skullgrin, instead of attacking, he's just saying that all these uh, rumors about him, you know, eating human flesh, la 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 la, he's saying those are all lies. And you see him start to make a rapport with uh, Carissa. And Jake's actually jealous of Skullgrin. And I like how, you know, these character developments, you start to see them grow and build. And this is a standalone issue, man. So that's, that's what I love about it. But you see that these, uh, Carissa and Skullgrin start to get this camaraderie. And she talks about how it feels good to get out of her acting clothes and just kind of relax. And she's like, my real name actually is uh, Ethel Stinkovitz, or however you pronounce that. You know, she kind of took on the name Carissa for Hollywood, which a lot of people do. And so Skullgrin's like, I also pretend to be something I'm not. And this is where you show that he's actually a robot. And then here... My suspicions were right. Skullgrin is really a Transformer. And all Transformers must be destroyed. Costume on. And here's where we see as the comic promised the return of Circuit Breaker. However, the artwork here, I mean, when you first see her way back in the early issues, I don't know if this was like supposed to be sped to get out or if they just didn't care enough, but for me, it just looks very blurry and kind of flat. I wish they would have done more dynamicness with it now with that i don't want to give any more away what happens the battle's kind of fun but um again kind of going back to kind of this king kong monster story uh carissa almost falls because of the actions of circuit breaker what happened read the book but she goes help and skullgren's like i'm sorry i doubted you carissa friend should never doubt friend and all the while Rolly's still filming now something does happen to him that makes you laugh at the end of the book but again you got to pick up this book to check it out as I said you can see the book the artwork starts to suffer a little bit but nonetheless for one <laughs> standalone story about a Decepticon pretender because if you guys remember um and this is what refreshed my memories if you watch the toys who made us they are talking about how when um, the American side of uh, Transformers 
parted ways with, what was it? Uh, to oh, God, I cannot think of it off the top of my head. Tome, I think it is. Let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong and feel free to make fun of me. But at this point, they kind of parted ways. And so the American branch of making the toys were scrambling for ideas. And so they started doing like hiders and pretenders. And I like how Skullgren's like, I'm a Decepticon pretender. Whereas you saw his armor splits open and it's just a robot. Not very uh, transformery. <laughs> but thankfully all that passed when Beast Wars came back around. What am I talking about for those uh, newer to the Transformers franchise? Go watch The Toys Who Made Us. That really brings you up to speed. It was a great episode on Netflix. And speaking of good stuff, this was an excellent comic book. If you have enjoyed it, please first support your local comic shop and pick up a copy. If you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little Autobot bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys will get notified. Come to the channel, and we love to hear your feedback and just talk with y'all down in the comments below or on our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, true believers.